This is my annual top five gadgets video, meaning this is the second year I'm doing it. In this video, I'm gonna go over my 2021 top five gadgets. Let's get into it. Twenty twenty was the year of the pandemic, or the pandemic started then, and so it was a year of staying home. So a lot of my gadgets reflected that. Twenty twenty one has been a transitional year, where I've been going back into the office. We've been doing more hybrid events, so a lot of my gadgets reflect that as well. Hi, my name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And in this video, we're going to go over the top five twenty twenty one gadgets that I've either started using or acquired in this year. So let's get into the list now. So starting us out at number five is the Elgato key light. This is my main video light and that's you know, shining on me right now. It's a very soft light, a very powerful light. It's very well built. It's built like a tank. And also it comes with a tabletop stand. And so that means I don't have to use like a light stand like I did before. So before I had this video, newer video light and it was a very good light, but I had a soft box with it and I had to use it with a stand. It took a lot of real estate on my office space here, but with this tabletop, it, it really declutters the office space a little bit more. The other thing I like about it is you can control it with an app, uh, either on the phone or a desktop app as well. So I can really dial in the power, the color temperature, but my favorite thing and the best thing about this light is how quiet it is. Now, before with my newer light, it had a loud fan, but this is dead quiet. So this is not only one of the better upgrades for my lighting setup, but this is one of probably the best upgrade for my audio setup as well. So this is the Elgato key light. Now this is an expensive light, but I got a, a use for a pretty good price. There are other alternatives out there. Uh, they usually have a remote control or just a phone app, but I just like the fact of how flexible this light is as far as to control via software on my Mac or on my phone. And I can also control it via my Stream Deck as well because they're made by the same company. So this is the Elgato key light. Next, coming in at number four is what you're hearing me on now. This is the Rode PodMic dynamic microphone. Now this has been an awesome upgrade to my audio setup here. Now before I was using a free condenser microphone or a, a dynamic microphone that I got from other people, but I really wanted to upgrade my audio quality other than my Elgato key light there. So this is a high quality sounding microphone. I've gotten a lot of compliments on my live streams, on my recorded videos, and even on my Zoom calls. The other thing is it looks great too. It looks very professional. And I've also got a lot of comments, especially on Zoom, when I'm on a regular Zoom call, as far as the quality is concerned. Now, the first thing you'll notice is when you open the box is how heavy this thing is. It's built like a tank. So I'm really happy for the build quality of this microphone. Now I've paired it with this Elgato low profile microphone arm, and this has been an awesome combination as far as my desk setup here. I also have this wind guard here that I bought on Etsy here. So it's a 3D printed thing that goes right on the pod mic. So this is number four, the Rode pod mic dynamic microphone. Coming in at number three is the Keychron K7 low profile mechanical keyboard. Now last year I had the Keychron K2 keyboard on my list. And that wasn't a low profile keyboard, but it was a mechanical keyboard, actually my first mechanical keyboard. And after using that keyboard, I was like, how come I haven't had a mechanical keyboard in a long time? Well, as a web developer and a programmer, having a nice keyboard is pretty key as far as productivity is concerned. So I kind of wanted to change things up. And that's the nice thing about mechanical keyboards. You can not only customize the look, but you can also customize the actual feel and experience you have with using the keyboard as well. So I wanted to change things up and get a low profile one. Now, before I had red linear switches, which is no click at all, no clicky feel, but these are the brown switches, which has a very slight clicky feel. So this has been perfect for me. And the low profile build really makes it look like a productivity type of keyboard. Now the uh, Keychron K2 was a regular size one. So I felt like more of a gaming keyboard. This one feels very productivity type which is kind of like the style of my desk here. It goes very well. So I've been really enjoying using the K7 keyboard here. And also it being a Keychron mechanical keyboard, 
It's very Mac centric first. It can do both Mac and Windows. It can be both wireless and wired. So I love the flexibility of this keyboard. So at number three, this is the Keychron K7 low profile mechanical keyboard with brown switches. Now coming in at number two, we have the A10 Mini Pro by Blackmagic Design. Now last year I had the A10 Mini non-pro edition and everything I loved about that device applies to this device. I can do up to four camera switches or input switches, I should say. So I can do an overhead shot. I can, I have my Chromecast attached to it. I can also even attach another computer to it as another input. Now, two of the things that they added to this pro model here are first, the ability to stream or record in the unit by itself without a computer. I just love how it can do all that work without straining or relying on a computer. So in my previous videos, the two of the, my previous videos, I did all the recording connected with an SSD drive, connected to the A10 Mini Pro, and I did all the recording in the unit here. And I've done a few live streams just from the A10 Mini Pro. Now, my number one feature that I love about the A10 Mini Pro as opposed to the non-pro version is the ability to show the multi-view. And now I have this little monitor here that I can turn on to show all the camera inputs, the, all the HDMI inputs all at once. And it gives me the ability to preview what I'm about to switch to as well. So that's been a really awesome upgrade. This is number two, the A10 Mini Pro by Blackmagic Design. Before I mention my number one gadget of 2021, I wanted to give you some honorable mentions here. First, I have my M1 iPad Pro 11 inch. This has been the best iPad I've ever owned. It didn't make my top five because I haven't used it as much as I would have liked to. Uh, I've been mainly using my M1 Mac mini and my number one 2021 gadget that I'm about to mention. The other honorable mention is my PTZ Optics 12X camera. Now this is a very old camera, a very expensive camera, but I bought it at a really, really good price on eBay. But it's been a really awesome camera to use for live events, hybrid events, uh, online events. So it's been it's given me some really good flexibility as far as uh, production is concerned. So these are two honorable mentions of 2021. Now we come to my number one gadget of 2021. Now last year my number one gadget was my M1 Mac Mini, and this year is just a continuation of that. My number one gadget this year is my M1 MacBook Air. Now I know it came out at the same time as the M1 Mac Mini, but I got it this year for work and I'm in the office three to four days a week and the rest of the time I'm working from home. So going back and forth, this has really met my computing needs. Now I mentioned in my M1 Mac Mini that I claim that the M1 Mac Mini is the best valued computer that you can get. Now I will, I will claim that the M1 MacBook Air is the best valued laptop you can get. The, the performance you get for the price, you just can't beat it. We're talking about raw computing horsepower and battery life as well. Now this has really met my need as far as computing is concerned. We're talking about 4K video editing, live streaming, uh, programming, everything I throw at it, it's been a workhorse. It's dead quiet, there's no fan in it. And even in my M1 Mac Mini, I rarely hear the fan. So I really think that unless you're really pushing it hard, uh, this is a better buy even over the M1 MacBook Pro. Now, if you really know that you need the computing power and the raw horsepower, especially when it comes to video editing and video rendering, then of course, get the M1 Pro or the M1 Max uh, MacBook Pros. But I would say this is the computer, the laptop for most people. This is my number one gadget, the M1 MacBook Air. So those are my top five gadgets of 2021. Now I say every year, the next year, I probably don't need to get as many gadgets because I have pretty much have everything I need, but that never works out that way, does it? So we'll see what happens in 2022. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.